this week by Archer's Choice. This week on Archer's Choice is Moose Mania. Welcome to this week's Archer's Choice. And this week, well, folks, it's time. Yes. We are ready to rock and roll with the biggest species in North America. Biggest deer. Moose mania. That's right. Once again, I mean, we started going McMillan up to McMillan River Adventures. We started heading up there in 2004. Yeah, yep. I mean, we've been going up there for a few times since then, and we have a blast every time. Lots of big moose, lots of encounters, and we can't wait to share this with you. In fact, it's a two-part show, so you have this week and next week. But before we forget, Lucky Logo. Oh, Cabela's, baby, my favorite place to shop. He can't not walk question, out of that store that's without it. buying I got something. a question. Never. Have any of you ever walked into a Cabela's and not bought anything? <laughs> it's not possible for I him. I think it's a, it's a, it's a C, CSD, CSD, Cabela's Shopping Disorder. Oh, I didn't know where you are going with that one. So we got lots of stuff, though. So we let's, do. let's pack our stuff up and head up to the Yukon. We got in at uh, 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock this morning. 4 a.m. 4 a.m. And uh, we're tired, we're exhausted, but we're in the Yukon. And we're going moose mania all the way again. We love the Yukon and we love moose hunting. I mean, who else has more moose mania than Ralph and I? Well, we headed up up there to the up to the Upper Mac is where we end up going, and uh, we met our two new guides. We had Steve and Greg Cross. They were a couple brothers from Alberta. They were kind of goofy. Just kidding, guys. Um, we had a great time in camp with them, and we also met the new outfitter that's running it up there, Don Lynn. Our moose hunts that we offer are an earlier hunt, which begins mid-September, and our second hunt begins late September and runs into October. Those hunts are based on the rut. Um, our, our mid or our hunt change date is what we kind of key as the prime peak of the rut. Um, our early hunt, you can take advantage of a little bit of pre-rut activity and get into some of the real hardcore rut activity. The second hunt should also get some of the hardcore rut activity and maybe a little bit of the post-rut when the bulls are traveling again, you know, trying to find that second cow or, or get some of the cows in that second heat cycle. So either hunt is a very good hunt to be on. Ralph always hunts the first day when we go to the Yukon. I don't know what it is, but I'm never allowed to hunt the first day. Well, this time he actually allowed me to hunt first. So we waited our six hours after we flew into camp. And actually, I think I might have taken a little bit of a nap before we went out because I was tired. Anyways, we went out, we waited our six hours, we got out on the boat, we started going up the river, and we weren't, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes into the trip, and I'm not really thinking that we're going to run into anything. And here, for the first time, we see a grizzly bear. First afternoon, and we're out driving the boat, just doing some scouting. We can hunt. We've waited our six hours. Actually, I think it's been about seven and a half, eight hours now. We come around the corner, and there's a bear. We thought it was a black bear, and once we put binoculars up on him, it's just a really white grizzly bear. It's the first afternoon up here in McMillan River. This is our fourth trip up here. That's the first time we've seen a bear. That was cool. All the time that we're up there, the activity that we see when we're hunting moose is insane. I believe we saw four young bulls, a cow, or two cows, a calf, I think, the grizzly bear, and a black bear all in the first evening of the hunt. Now that's pretty awesome. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with the Arch Choice with a cow calling bull. Welcome back to the Arch Choice. Now, let's get into some moose action. It's the first morning here on the McMillan River. And we are getting ready. We're going to pack up our stuff. 
and head out yesterday afternoon, first afternoon out. We waited our six hours, got out on the river, and uh, we saw a grizzly bear, a cow, a calf, and four, four small bulls in an hour and a half on the very first afternoon we're here. Could be good, could be. Got Greg and I, and we're going through the brush, and we're raking some trees and grunting sometimes, and we see this bull. Well, the bull that we first see isn't the bull that we saw as we were floating by the rib, by this oxbow. It was the bull that we saw originally on the other side of this oxbow. He came down here too, so now we're thinking, well, is it one bull or two? And what happened was this other bull comes out through this thicket of the brush, and he's standing there looking at us. I mean, it was just so majestic to see this animal. It was awesome. Well, all of a sudden, the bull that's about 50 yards from us starts cow calling. At first, we all thought there was a cow around there and they're both trying to fight for this cow. It's this bull. We, I get my binocular, get my Nikons up there and I'm looking and here, this, this bull is, and you can see his lips moving. It was just the weirdest thing. And, Now that was pretty darn exciting, I'll tell you what. No kidding, two. You know, two bowls on the same little like oxbow, I guess, yeah. is that what this is called, a little peninsula. We were drifting down the river, and uh, oh, I still hear him cracking back there. Yeah. And we, we got spotted, we heard the one, we spotted him, we went after him oh, a little bit, we didn't get real close to him. We saw he had good fronts, but he was kind of narrow. So we come around the curve of this oxbow, and we hear another bowl. Yeah, it's just here. off the rock bar. So all of a sudden, we, we see him, and he looks like he's a, he's a good bull. We get out of the boat, we get up there, and then all of a sudden, it's a little guy. The, the, well, I shouldn't say little. The other one that we saw originally on yeah. the other side of this oxbow. So there's two bulls on this oxbow, and they're both nice looking bulls. Yeah. The closest we got was about 38, 39 yards right here from the one that we actually saw originally on the other side yeah. of the oxbow, but uh, he was, that other one, the second one, he was making all kinds of weird noises. I oh. thought he was cow calling there for yeah. a minute. I'm like, uh oh. Something's wrong with him. Yeah, and I thought right away that there was maybe a cow and a calf back in here somewhere. Yeah. But, and then the two bulls right together. 
facing each other. Yeah, I honestly thought that, that we were going to see them just I did bonk too. heads yeah. and stuff like that. But it looked like there might be a little battle coming. But yeah, that, that was really oh, interesting. I wish that cow, I mean, that bull made those, that bellowing. Oh, I, yeah. I've never heard that before, and it seriously it sounded like a cow call. Yeah, high pitched and drawn yeah. out. Yeah. yeah. Definitely didn't sound like the normal bull grunt. I do have to say, though, is that we jumped over that little creek, <laughs> and my fancy new wader boots should have been up because now my yeah. boots soaking wet because it went in. But now we got to go back across. Yeah. But that's Maybe, okay. It's uh, already somebody wet. Somebody can piggyback us. Ralph? <laughs> you're not going to piggyback us? Don't go anywhere because we come back. It's Moose Mania at its best, and it's my turn. So we have the two bulls calling. Well, the one bull was like cow calling, which was really odd. But now we're going to go into your first encounter. Yes. It's about What's going time. to happen? I, I think you need to watch this and then we'll explain it. Dang. Think so? Man. Dang. Oh. Well, I got this bull, we're working him, we're calling, Don's calling, Steve's in it, we're, we're, we're making noises. I mean, this bull's coming in, but he's holding back and he's holding back. Finally, he commits. So I hurry up, I come to full draw. As he's walking, he stops. I was holding a little too long, I think, and I went, Doo -doo. he caught that movement, stopped, froze, turned and walked away, and he was a good bull. He looked really wide. Look from where I was over here, he looked really wide and laid back. He didn't have a lot of, he didn't have big fronts or anything. What a beautiful bull. That's why we come to the big mill. Well, it's my turn to hunt. And uh, we're in the boat, Steve and Greg and Ralph and I, we're in the boat, we're going up, we're going up river. We go around the bend and we see a moose. And it's right where the two rivers split, right where the upper Mac and the lower Mac kind of merge together. So we're looking at it and we're like, hey, and it just went to the brush. So we get the boat over across this little creek thing. We get the boat over off of that and we start walking in. We, we can hear him grunting, but we, don't, we haven't seen him again yet. and we can tell he's getting really close. So we get set up. He decided he wanted to come right underneath that pine tree that I'm standing next to. Don't go anywhere, because when we come back, we got a lot of bull and Vicky, or is that Vicky and a lot of bull? It's my turn now, my turn. Yep. And unbelievable. Folks, what we're going to share with you is to me, well, I think to a lot of people that have seen it, the most incredible moose footage you've ever seen. We are talking. Five feet. Not yards. Five feet. Not yards. No, wait, just watch the footage. Oh. 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 
when I was sitting there, and now I replayed over my head over and over and over. He was less than five feet, like two big steps. Like, as we were editing the footage, it went two and a half arrow lengths from me. Like, it barely left my bow, my vixen, and hit that animal. How you doing? What a rush. He's dead. Oh, really? Thanks for work. Oh. Steve, <laughs> I'll tell you, I have never been so close to a moose. Now, I filmed one at seven yards, but this one I think was like five steps. And you guys heard him grunt a couple times, I guess, and came in and we heard him grunt louder and louder, and it sounded like his bull was coming closer. And you had Ralph and I, we set up right there by that pine tree, and you started going further away and calling and Kind of like elk hunting, I guess, huh? Yep. Just kind of trying to play him which way you want him to go. You bet. And anyways, he came, that bull was like 15 yards from me, and he stopped, and he started going behind us. And I go, oh, no, he's going to go behind us. And we just held tight, and he turned around, and he came back around, and all of a sudden I realized, I mean, he's going to come at like five feet. And I'm not kidding. I drew my bow back. <laughs> I drew my bow back. And I was waiting for him to step like right there because I knew that it'd be a quarter away shot. But he stopped, so I just moved my bow like, Three, three inches over and just smashed him. He took that arrow and ran. And actually, when I came up to meet you, my arrow, I just saw it right there. <coughs> my tracer? arrow, my tracer. Beeman's baby. I saw that thing go in him. And then as he took those couple steps, his shoulder went poof, and he just cracked my beeman. That'll, see, he's paid the price. Break my beeman, that's what happens. And there's some. Oh, yeah. Huh. Why do you do that oh. to me? Look, he always sees it before <laughs> me. <laughs> we found nice it. work. <laughs> oh my gosh, sorry if I'm sweating. We are up here at McMillan River Adventures. Again. Again. And it is the second evening of my hunt. And I shot this beautiful bull. And I have to tell you, I filmed bull at seven yards. I shot this bull at five feet. It was insane. This place is unbelievable. We have never had a bad experience up here and my gosh, it just keeps getting better and better. Five feet. Five feet. That's yeah. That's all I, I'm proud of you. Thank you. That I'm was telling awesome. you what, we're standing there, we're calling. Unbelievable. Steve's calling, you're filming, and that bull, there's a trail 15 yards. You know, he it, didn't it just take proves it. That what we've always said moose don't take trails, they make them. I mean, I shot a Yukon bull moose at five feet. Five feet. Oh my gosh. Now you're talking about my five heart. foot. You're talking about an animal that at the at the hump. Seven feet tall. So I shot him closer could be at than seven he, foot, give or take. Yeah, but then at five feet away. But I shot him less than what he is tall. That's amazing. That was crazy. Hey. This is a two-part show, though, so next week we have a lot more Moose Mania footage to show you, and we'll see if Ralph can actually get a bull. Magnified we'll see what happens. Moose Mania. We'll see what happens. If you happen to see the Lucky Logo this week, which was? Cabela's, baby. Favorite place to shop. Shop till you drop, because, yeah, I love it. You okay? Yeah, I want to okay. go. Can we go there again? Oh, my again? gosh. Log on to archerschoice.com. Check out the new website. Fill out the information on the Lucky Logo button, and someone's going to win some great stuff from Cabela's and a whole bunch of other great gear. Oh, yeah. So we want to thank you for watching this week's Archer's Choice. We'll see you next week, same time. Same channel. Right here on, on the, the Archer's, Archer's Choice. Choice.